Today, I tell you how to build a reliable drift car. What is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about what I feel makes a drift car reliable. There are many ways to do this, but this is how I personally recommend to do it. Number one, don't overbuild. The number one thing to do is to not overbuild. Overbuilding your car can introduce problems that you might not be able to fix at the track. If you are questioning whether you should do something or not, chances are you shouldn't. You want as much seat time as you can get. Don't overstep your boundaries. If you're just starting out, you don't need a 500 horsepower car. Chances are your stock power or a little overstock will be fine for most grass root tracks. Build to your skill level. Step two, bash bars. To have a reliable car, you need to protect your car. This is where bash bars come into play. Common drift platform vehicles such as a 240, a 350, BMWs, and so on will have pre-made bash bars that can be found pretty easily. Whether you tandem or ride solo, you will at one point find yourself in a bad situation. Walls aren't soft and neither are other cars. There are a lot of parts that can and will take damage from an impact. Bash bars are designed to protect those parts and they are also designed to be a crumple zone. Crumple zone meaning the bash bar will take the impact and not your frame or chassis. Step three, make it simple. Another big one is to make it simple. Say you're doing a full stand alone with a custom switch panel. Make everything easy to get to. Let's use my build as an example. I am eventually going to wire all of my accessories into a switch panel that will be on my dash. Since my car is going to be a track only car, I removed all the airbags. With the passenger bag removed, that gives me a perfect spot to put my fuse box and relays. I plan to have a tray that will house my fuse box, relays, and connections all neatly wired. The key is to make it easily fixable in the event that something goes wrong, and trust me, something will go wrong more often than not. Step four, don't cheap out on parts. This one is controversial. There are times that you can cheap out on stuff, but most of the times don't. When it comes to parts that normally see a lot of wear and tear, buy good parts. Don't buy the cheap eBay special control arms, they break. When they break, bad things happen. I learned the hard way by buying cheap coilovers. I got max speeding rods when I first bought my Mustang because they were $200. When they came, they were already leaking all the fluid out of them. The box was clearly soaking wet from all of the fluid from inside of the struts. And to top it off, the rear shocks didn't even work. Halfway through the first season, they were bouncy and all of the fluid was already gone. At this point, they didn't do anything. The lock rings never stayed tight, therefore resulting in the lower mounts having a ton of play. The lesson is you get what you pay for. And the fifth and final step is check over your car before events. This is a big one. You should be checking your car out before every single event that you go to. Make sure all bolts are tight. Make sure you don't have any fluids leaking. Make sure your fluids are topped off and make sure that your car passes tech inspection. If bolts are loose, components can fall off, resulting in a crash. If you have fluids leaking, they can get on track and cause a crash or cause the event to be stopped, resulting in you and every other person to lose seat time. If your fluids are low, such as coolant, you can overheat. If your engine oil is low, you can starve the engine of oil, causing the engine to sustain damage from the high revs. If your car doesn't pass tech, you can't drive until you fix what is wrong with it. Make sure your battery is securely tied down. No zip ties, no ratchet straps, nothing like that. Make sure your driver and passenger seats are bolted down and do not have any play. This can become a safety hazard. I've seen seats break and it sucks for the driver. Make sure to read the rules for your local tracks. The majority of them will have the same guidelines that they follow. A lot of grassroots events will take recommendations from the FD rule books. So your best bet is to build your car based off of the Pro-Am spec of the Formula Drift rulebook. In the long run, just give a shit about your car. Don't be a hack and you shouldn't have any problems. I understand that it can be expensive to build a car. I've been there. I'm still there. But trust me when I say this, you will be glad you spent the extra money. Hopefully I can give you some insight. Be sure to subscribe and if you liked this video, please leave a like. That is it for me. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Peace.